Do you get to pick and choose when you can shame people, when you can hurt people, and when you can be outright poisonous? You get to choose that. But the moment anyone else comes even slightly close, it is totally not okay. And you must tar and feather them publicly on the internet. Righteous. Hey, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for being here. Make sure you click the like button somewhere throughout this video. If you like it, make sure you click subscribe, hit the bell so that you get notifications when I post and share this with a friend. This one, trust me, you are gonna wanna share this with a friend. So this is a brand new journey for me. I just started creating my own YouTube videos. I actually have only recorded two videos before this and I haven't even posted them yet. But there has been a recent turn of events in a space I'm very familiar from and I feel like I need to share my point of view on it. So a little background. I was in MLMs for close to seven years total. I started back around 2016 took a break for some time and re-entered the industry in 2018. And I was a top leader in my last three companies, top seller, top customer getter, always on the leaderboards for customers. I have experience and I know how detrimental MLMs can be, in my opinion, to a woman's mental health. I know how poisonous and toxic some women within the MLM community can be. I've been there and I have felt it. That is why I walked away. In 2022, I found the anti-MLM community on YouTube. A former teammate of mine started creating YouTube videos. We were in the empire together. And when I realized she was posting videos, I had already actually been subscribed, subscribed to her and then I saw her posting anti-MLM content and I was like, what is going on? So she absolutely caught my attention. I started watching her videos and it helped me really, in my mind, articulate how I was feeling about what was going on in the industry at that time. There are some incredible creators in the anti-MLM community, but like any other community, there's always a few rotten apples spoil the bunch. So for the last five or six months, I've noticed there are some really hateful creators in the anti-MLM space. They are absolutely poisonous to this movement. And that is why I'm here today. I'm here to educate you and bring awareness to the anti-MLM movement. And I'll let you decide in your own opinion, if you think that they're being hateful, harmful, or helpful? Have they taken it too far? Let me know in the comments what you think as I go through this video. Recently, an anti MLMer called Jessica Hickson posted a video on TikTok about a brand partnership. Essentially, she was using a dewormer product, doing some fasting, and she was sharing her results on the app. The post got a lot of attention because it is considered pseudoscience by many, which means it's not real science. You don't actually need to deworm. That is the outlook that many people have on it. I'm not here to express my opinion on it. And I do have a medical background. I have a bachelor's of science in nursing. There was a great creator who made a video about it with very great educational content. Actually two, I take that back. There were two creators on YouTube that made videos about this purported pseudoscience and why you may not actually need a deworming product as an American human in today's day and age. And those videos were awesome. But then on the other hand, there were some other creators who went to their stories and their Instagram feeds to call Jessica out for things like being racist. Yeah. Someone actually called her a racist for vulnerably posting a reaction to the content that had been posted about her in reaction to her TikTok videos and calmly 
saying in a YouTube community post that she would actually now be leaving the anti-MLM community and that the last video she posted would be her last anti-MLM commentary video ever. Some people took that calm, vulnerable, insightful reaction and said that she was being racist because she reacted now, but didn't react when the first creator made a video about her. So the new video that was released just yesterday on the 7th of January was released by a woman of color. Now, me personally, I saw the first video that was released and I thought she was also a woman of color, but I'm not sure. Now, let's watch together the video I'm talking about where Jessica is being called a racist. Fair warning, she's long-winded. In 2020, I took it upon myself to really start unlearning a lot of the things that I had learned over my lifetime. And a lot of the things that I just did not understand that my husband or even my sons had to go through. Um, because I always looked at them and said, I love them and I'm a white person. So why can't everybody else love them? You know, I always just thought that that was enough, right? That that was it. And so I came across a post in in 2020 i came across a facebook memory that popped up in uh from 2017 and that post was kev on stage or you know the com he's a really funny comedian i can't remember his name but i came across that post and the post stated basically he was talking about how black men felt whenever they were getting pulled over and uh, the emotions and stuff and the thoughts that go through his head. If I can find the post, I'll share it. Um, but the more, the most important, well, the po important part to this story is I, I had a lot of people um, in that Facebook memory. I had a lot of comments in there, you know, the comments that state, you know, if they would just comply, they wouldn't get hurt or, you know, blah, 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 all that BS. Um, and one post one one person that was in that post was actually one of my best friends at the time. They had been my best friend for years, um, like years. And they were one of the people that said, if they would just listen and comply, then nobody would get hurt. And do you know what I said in 2017 to my friend, very close friend, who was also very close to my husband and my children? I said, sometimes we'll just have to agree to disagree. Like we were talking about pineapple on pizza. When I saw that I said that in 2020, when that Facebook memory popped up, it hit me like a sack of potatoes in my gut because I was part of the problem. And when I say I was part of the problem, I mean that when I saw something, I didn't say anything. So when I saw that I had commented that we would have to agree to disagree on human rights, okay, I saw and I swore and promised myself that any time that I saw even a remote, minute amount, amount of racism, that I would call it out <laughs> from that moment. And I knew that from that point on that I would no longer allow people in my life that believed that even the smallest amount of even insinuation racism was okay. So I'm going to go on here and I'm going to tell you this. 
if what I say about certain things causes you to come to me and say, Cheryl, that is wrong that you insinuated that. I want you to understand this. I really thought about what I was going to post when I posted about Brianna's YouTube channel and YouTube video from today. I even reached out and had a conversation with her. And what I actually said to her is what I should have posted because then you all wouldn't be confused. Um, but what I will tell you is this. If I see something, I will say something. And I wish I could say I'm sorry, but I'm really not sorry. Because then again, that would be like me. Agreeing to disagree. Like it's pineapples on pizza. Sometimes when you really sit back, and I'm not saying that because I am married to a black man makes me more woke than others. I'm saying that that I, I've had a lot of conversations and a lot of insight. I've lost a lot of friends and a lot of family members because I no longer agree to disagree. I now speak up about it and I speak out about it. And I now, if you can't love my husband or anyone that is not white. Okay, so that was a lot about her husband and not a lot about Jessica or the situation with the YouTube video that was posted about Jessica. In no way do I believe that by Jessica pulling out of the anti-MLM community after a certain person's video was posted was done out of racism. In no way do I believe that. And I don't think anyone else but this woman believes that either. I think this woman likes to talk. And I also think her talking gets her in a little bit of trouble. You need to be really, really careful about what you say about people publicly. That could damage them, their reputation, their career for their entire lives. One thing I've seen these creators talk about a lot is we don't bully people. We only base our arguments on facts. Nothing that that woman just spouted off in her story sequence had anything to do with factual information regarding Jessica Hickson leaving the anti-MLM community. And I am in no way trying to bypass the effects that racism has on people. But I also understand that you have to be really, really careful when you're throwing that word around because you could absolutely ruin someone with it. Your whole see something, say something, you saw nothing and made something out of it and then said something. And that is a dangerous, dangerous line to walk, in my opinion. Racism is not something to be sensationalized. It's not something to just throw out there because you had an epiphany that maybe possibly it could be racism with no blatant proof and no real context. That is an attack on a person. It's a personal attack. You remember the story of the boy who cried wolf, right? That's what you can apply to the situation. When people hear something that is not true, over and over and over again, they start to ignore it. So if we start saying that everything is racist, that isn't. Now, we should truly call it things that are, absolutely. But if we start saying things that aren't are, 
people become desensitized to it. People become immune to the phrases like you are a racist or she is a racist. People stop tuning in. Your presumption of someone's racial judgment is not a fact. That is an attack. So since we're talking about attacks, let's now watch this video from another creator who chums with the one we just watched. Hate to say it, but she's also long-winded. I tried to shorten this one as much as I could. Dan, the disconnect between people within the anti-MLM movement who claim to be so pro-science and evidence-based, completely turning a cheek, ignoring, being complacent, and not calling out a creator within this community who is doing the exact things that we call out the boss babes for and promoting dangerous medical misinformation to peddle the products that could potentially really harm people that they're selling in their MLMs. I don't understand, like, I don't understand what, because they're your supposed friend because they have way more followers than you and you want to ride those coattails, like, what is it? Because I know that if I somehow did some like that or if I misspoke or I said something wrong and out of turn that the people within this community would re would keep me accountable and be like hey girl listen this ain't it you should probably rethink this stance maybe not promote this this product this business whatever because it it completely goes against like every ethical thing that we talk about when talking about multi-level marketing companies and all of the dangerous pseudoscience misinformation that they put out to prey on people's health concerns like i would hope y'all would come to me and be like amber girl no please reconsider i would welcome that because we encourage critical thinking over here right and deductive reasoning and fact checking and researching the facts so we can put out correct information for people to find so they can educate themselves and not get sucked in by these scams and the con artists and the snake oil salesmen like that's all about what we do within the movement all of us creators within the anti mlm movement at least for me and it's just so wild to me the again the disconnect the cognitive dissonance around not holding our own to the same standards that we're holding the boss babes to who are doing these things it doesn't matter if the product is in from an mlm or not if it's harmful then it should be called out again if we start blurring the lines between what's acceptable and what's not just because someone may be a friend or a colleague or a larger creator than us and them doing something wrong and promoting potentially dangerous things to their followers then that completely negates all the work that we do within the anti-mlm movement and the ethics that we preach, that we pride ourselves on, right? So it's, and you can agree with me if you want, but maybe sit with that for a little bit and think of why, why would you allow it to happen and not say anything? There have been things that I have misspoke on and people have come to me and be like, hey girl, listen, here's the thing should rethink this and i corrected myself i have no problem do that because when you want to actually be a good activist and ally etc you don't sit in complicity when you see your peers doing harmful things and if you're the one in the wrong you don't just feign ignorance and run and hide and claim victimhood without even an acknowledgement 
of your wrong. Assuming that all creators should just now denounce JH because of a brand partnership that she posted on TikTok is absolutely egregious. Do you expect creators to stop TikTok and hashtags and just start calling out all other influencers, fitfluencers, health and wellness influencers, and all brands? Is that what you expect? Are we so far gone from common sense that we don't believe people, consumers on these apps have a personal choice? Are we assuming that nobody has the brain cells to exercise personal choice? Are we assuming that just because Jessica Hickson posted a brand promotion for a dewormer that all kinds of people are just going to go run and get the dewormer without, without at least typing into Google? Do I need a parasitic cleanse as a healthy American woman? Are we assuming that all people are uneducated? Because to me, that feels a little bit of like a superiority complex coming from y'all. For you to just implicitly assume that people don't have the frame of mind to make decisions for themselves, that is ridiculous. Here's another creator from the anti-MLM or anti-scam commentary movement community if you will here's her take on the situation i don't know if it was in response to this lady's video that i just played or not like, she's not as long-winded oh like this person's doing this what are your thoughts on it and it's like i don't care like they can do whatever they want i don't care i am focused on my own content but that's really what i wanted to say is like just because someone a creator whoever isn't like publicly denouncing someone or isn't um right wiggum um uh, or is focusing on like being maybe a little bit more professional or not wanting to get caught up in shit like i don't want to do that and just because someone doesn't say something like yes that's a response in itself but that doesn't mean that they agree or disagree with something um and just like stop making assumptions please it's petty i don't care I just want to focus on me, myself, and I. She said petty and girl, I agree. Because it appears that Cece is actually looking at her creatorship as a profession. She wants to be professional when she is doing her commentator, anti-scam, anti-MLM content. And I don't blame her. I think that's a great way to look at it. She earns an income from it. She is a professional creator. Now, let's get back to the attacks, shall we? And let's talk a little bit about accountability, since this is what this whole campaign is allegedly about. So back in October, I believe it was, I saw a post from another one of The Crew's Instagram feeds. I used to follow this woman. I liked her. I liked all of them at one point. I'm not saying I dislike them. I just don't really like what they're on right now. So she posted a reel and in the reel, there was a beach body coach behind her and it was like a green screen. And I will share that post with you because I saved it. Yes, I did. And I tried to hold them accountable or at least this woman accountable because well, you'll see why. And there was a very, very large lack of accountability here from a large group, the crew, okay? Let's watch. Got it? You can only be a beach body coach if you're willing to post your workouts every single morning. She looks great. She's doing her, her lift, pants her up. What? Why do you roll your pants down like that? I can almost see your hoo-ha. Nobody wants to see that. Ooh, we understand. We understand you look amazing. Whatever. Pull up your pants. In my opinion, this is S-L-U-T shaming. Absolutely shaming this beautiful woman's sexuality. 
why doesn't she have the right to post low sitting pants or leggings? So what if her VAG was hanging out a little and it wasn't? This is an attack, a personal one, on this woman's body and her right to her own sexuality. So when I went and tried to hold her responsible in the comments, she basically said, she's a scammer, she deserves it. And then all of the crew, the minions, came in to support. I don't have all comments because this video was deleted. The caption of this video was, I know you were Britney's backup dancer, it doesn't give you permission to show the goods on the gram because someone needs to give her permission? Excuse me? And then the minions came into the comments. One of them said, me calling out her deceptive business practices is not SLUT shaming, nice try though. So you don't care that she manipulates and uses deceptive tactics to recruit people to a business model that preys on vulnerable women, cool. How do you feel about coaches that have had mommy makeovers and plastic surgery who claim their transformations were all beach body programs? Manipulative, manipulative, manipulative. I agree. But what does that have to do with the issue at hand? She's not just posting her body to post her body. If that's all she's doing, have at it. Again, the issue is she manipulates the images to promote selling beach body programs. That is unethical. Actually, she is harming people by manipulating her photos to make herself look smaller than she is. Photoshop, contour sticks, playing the angles, filters, pretending the restrictive eating plans and programs have helped her get where she is. If you see her in any other coach's story, she does not look like this. It's deceptive and unethical. Well, yeah, if she's doing that, it is deceptive and unethical. But again, what does that have to do with SLUT she, uh, t uh, 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 shaming? What does that have to do with you trying to take this woman's sexuality away from her? I mean, what? We're really deflecting here, aren't we? And it was funny because I have a screenshot here from Red Flag Education that says, what is Darvo? Deny, attack, reverse, victim, and offender. It's a manipulation tactic to deny one's wrongdoing and reverse roles so they seem like the victim and their victim seems to be the perpetrator. Just, I'll, I'll just let that one sink in for a minute here. Again, she's saying all kinds of stuff about her being unethical, how she's posting deceptive marketing and using modified, um, you know, touched up photos and all this stuff. Okay, if that is what she's doing, that is wrong. I would never stand for that. I lost 120 pounds naturally. And I don't like people that take shortcuts. I just don't. I would never agree with that. Anyone who knows me knows I wouldn't agree with that. But I also don't agree with the hatred pointed at this woman for A, having a vagina and B, wearing tight clothes on the internet that showed no part of it at all. Like, not even close. You were absolutely SLUT shaming this woman publicly. And then your friend swooped in to try and deflect and darvo me. Crazy. Another chick. She's not slut shaming. She's pointing out that Tania is using Photoshop to make the illusion her body is that. Uh, she uses this tactic over and over to manipulate her followers. Look at me. I did this through beach body workouts. So can you DM me? Let's talk girl. She, Tania, did outright state it, but I followed her for years as a BB customer to know her sales tactics. Why do you need to know the sales tactics as a BB customer? But okay. I have no doubt she has a nice figure, but these influencers like her grind my gears by not being honest. They create this faux lifestyle of how you can live this high roller lifestyle and make real money when we know it's nothing but a crock of poop. Do you know how many times we all tried to get her, Kat, and the others to be transparent with her followers? I lost count. We've all been nice about it too. I pleaded with Kat recently, only to be blocked after she stated she will not block anyone just to ask them politely to leave. Well, she didn't ask me politely to leave and I sent the screenshots to da da da. Lastly, there are private platforms for anyone wanting to show off their kitties and eggplants and peaches. 
There are minors on IG, so the last thing they want to see is that. No one is bashing her body, just asking her to have a little class not to expose her lady parts. She can create an OnlyFans account for that. This woman just SLUT shamed all over again, all through that comment. By telling a woman, you need to go to OnlyFans for that, to post a workout video that showed absolutely nothing but some abs? This is, she was not doing SEX work on this app. She was working out, y'all. I'm so confused. I'm st like, I'm still confused. <sighs> and then the woman who called Jessica Hickson a racist. Now, here we go. Look, I get that some of you think this is shamming a woman for her body, but what this is is calling her out for being inauthentic. If she wanted to work out with her pants pulled down, then okay, but then she couldn't Photoshop her entire workout video. She only pulls her pants down like that to Photoshop, and I'm sorry, but it is deceptive. If original poster was SLUT shaming, then she would have been, you then she would have used the million photos she had in her itty bitty bikinis, but she didn't. More SLUT shaming. I think you're missing the point. We were always open to conversations, but the reason we focus on certain people is because they are the most problematic and have a larger influence. Sometimes we have to share the hard stuff, but it's never with malicious intent. Once again, deflection. Another one. You think Tania honestly cares. She doesn't. And Amy was not SLUT shaming. I don't know why you're defending a woman who doesn't give a F about scamming some mother into becoming a coach using sales tactics because she does. If you think she's so innocent and has a perception of poor Tania, please bye. Do you know how many current Huns volunteering come sliding into so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so, letting them know all that goes into Kat, Tania, Emily's and other elites private coaching groups? They send the video, audio, screenshot evidence. Did you know they are taught how to pose to make it appear there's a drastic change in their appearance as far as abs and weight loss? Yeah, we aren't stupid and we just got confirmation from real sources of what we already knew. Do you need to pick a side that you are on? We get cussed out and ridiculed for our appearance from these Huns. You defend with such passion. Don't dare, don't dare label yourself anti-MLM and come on to original posters post and accuse her of such poop. You can't stay on the other side for all I care. Ma'am? Okay, so my last comment and then it was removed after this. I'm not defending Tania at all, or any MLM. I was in the top 0.5%. Trust me, if anyone knows what happens in the top of pyramids, I do. I know they promote toxic diet culture. I'm defending women, period. This isn't about sides. You don't get immunity because an MLM hurt you. But if you look at the behavior of many in this comment section, some of y'all aren't far off from a cult. Multiple times people have told you what you're saying is harmful, but you're trying to deflect and pinpoint the fact that Tania is bad. Maybe she is, but she's a woman. And shaming one woman is doing it to all women. Would you walk up to a gay man and call him the F word because he's an MLM and perpetuates cult-like beliefs and narratives? Would it be okay then? Would you use a racial slur toward a person of color because they're in an MLM? Saying ew about a woman's vagina is shaming her for having one, especially with zero context. Given context wouldn't have made it any more tasteful. Amy says ally in her bio, but this is such unfreaking allyish behavior. When someone tells you something hurts them or other people, you don't get to decide whether or not that's true. But again, a group of white women telling everyone what is okay and what isn't. Classic. I don't know if you know this yet, but you're acting just like the epitome of everything you claim to hate. Shaming people, gaslighting, straight up denial, refusal to recognize any other viewpoint. So who's the Carl D in y'all's cult? Because the guidelines sound about the same to get in. If you want to be hard and advocate for women, know the difference between being hard and being harmful, especially when you're always pointing the finger away from yourself. Newsflash, there's always at least one point. That's what I meant to say is there's always at least one finger pointed back. But I said there's always one finger point because, you know, like if you're pointing the finger, there's actually three pointed back. That's what I meant. Anyway, they would not assume accountability in this situation, as you can see, but they expect Jessica to assume accountability in this situation. So is it okay for you to dish the accountability, friend, but you can't take the accountability? Do you get to pick and choose which, which situations accountability is taken in? Do you get to pick and choose when you can shame people, when you can hurt people? 
And when you can be outright poisonous, you get to choose that. But the moment anyone else comes even slightly close, it is totally not okay. And you must tar and feather them publicly on the internet. Righteous. Other attacks I have seen from this crew of creators. Please understand, I am not pointing anyone else out in this video other than this little crew of people. It's a group mind for sure. And they are always attacking someone. There's like a pick of the day. I think they wake up and they go to their phones and like, who are we going to pick on today? Other attacks I've seen from them. I have seen them talk about people's drinking habits, calling them alcoholics. And then also on the other side of that, talk about how people in MLMs and health and wellness companies shouldn't be diagnosing people. But you diagnose an alcoholic multiple times. I tried to find the videos about this, but I haven't been able to find them. So if anyone else can, send them my way, please. I've seen them actively discuss and publicly post about marriages, interpersonal relationships, adultery, affairs, publicly post about beach body coaches, intermarital relations, who's who and who isn't. I'd like to ask, someone posted about your husband cheating on you, how would that make you feel? Always remember, there's a third person in the situation that got cheated on. And the rumors circulating the internet, it's probably pretty harmful, not helpful for her. I've even seen them pick apart reels posted by other Beachbody coaches who didn't mention this alleged affair that was happening but mentioned Adam Levine having an affair. A lot of you are asking why we don't like Adam Levine. And it's not that serious. I don't even know the guy. I don't know if I like him or not. But there's just some rumors going around. It started last night on TikTok when this girl a video claiming that she has been having an affair with him. And then all these other girls came out with screenshots and proof that basically he's been unfaithful. He's just on the naughty list right now. But then again, what do we know? So he's on the naughty list right now. Hmm. And it's big enough for where you are going to bring it up. So what about this? Hmm. We didn't say anything about Joel. That's weird. Or... Lies, lies, and hmm. more lies, and lies on top of lies. Can't be mad about one. What would Emily have said? Would she have gone, just so y'all know, I had an affair. I just want to make sure I call it out right now so that nobody calls me out for not calling out the affair that I knew about. So th don't call me out, okay? Like, what would she have said? Normal people don't talk about other people's marriages because it is personal like where did this all go wrong it seems to me like this lack of accountability from them comes with the guise of if someone's in a pyramid scheme or what i see as a pyramid scheme i'm allowed to call them out for anything i've even seen them attack parenthood saying that she didn't quarantine her child properly when the child had hand foot mouth disease even hashtagging and calling her Trashly Ashley. This is damaging, poisonous, toxic, egregious, disgusting, ridiculous behavior. I created this channel with the intent to talk about my healing experiences. I haven't quite made it there yet in entirety. I don't have much recorded yet. But I'm going to take the chance and post this YouTube video as soon as I can to get the word out because education needs to happen in this situation. My biggest issue is I have heard a podcast where this woman who called Jessica Hickson racist was actually educated about how to properly address anti-MLM issues.
or issues within MLMs. This very, very kind woman, she was really schooling about how to speak about people, how to not bring in ad hominem attacks, how, ad hominem, hominem, ad, you know, that the ad hominem attacks, how to not attack people, per, people's personalities, their looks, their parenthood, how to not bring personal things into it. And yet it is still happening. Because if just that one person, and we're going to trigger warning, mental health, yeah. If just one person that you're talking about sees it and tries to commit suicide. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, yeah. I, do I, I don't think I need to say anything else, right? Yeah. Like that's yeah. on you. I mean, it's not, you did not make anyone do that. Just like nobody made us spend all the money in network marketing, yeah. but like, it's true, you know, though. you know, I agree with you a hundred percent because it is like there, there are people that take it too far. And I have been one of those people that have taken it too far before. Right now, do I stand yeah. behind the majority of the stuff that I have posted uh, there? Yes. But just like you said, there's a lot of butts in it because there was a different intent that maybe I did not, yeah. it didn't come across correctly. Right. So right. just like I always say, when you know better, you do better. And that's part of the, the reason like right. behind like network marketing and calling people out on their BS is when they know better, they should do better, but they don't. Right. So for us, I think we should really take a step to when you know better, you do better. Like think about how this is going to, I mean, I don't want to be the reason that somebody is so depressed that they would take their own life. Right. Like that is right. That's, that's right. That's scary right. to me. Yeah. yeah. And ultimately that's what we're working with here too, is because we have to remember these people are most likely people who joined for the same reasons that we did. We want more money because we're struggling. We want more community because we don't feel connected to our friendships. We don't feel like we're able to have a good support system. And potentially also there is something traumatic that has happened in your life that, that, that trauma button that people yeah. press and they say, Oh, you just had a miscarriage. You yeah. should join my team. Yeah. We are there for you. We have something that can help you. Oh, you just had this. Oh, your son has that. Oh, blah, 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 blah. So, yeah. you know, they all have this base issue. But yeah. or most people have a base issue of something that's wrong that we don't necessarily know about, or maybe yeah. we do because they're put, posting it all over the place, trying to sell their products, but yeah. you know, whatever, we don't have all the subtext. We, we are not part of their life. So yeah. there might be more, there might be less, you know, things might be embellished. Things might be exactly as they are, or we might not yeah. have all the information at all. Yeah. Um, and those are things that we really have to remember when we're talking about other people, because ultimately that's what we're doing is we're talking about other people. Right. And they're um, human. They're, and they're, they're human. people. And yeah. they have issues. Yeah. Um, so these are really the things that I think people need to keep in mind. And I think that the other thing that I think we need to do better is I think that we need to blur faces. I think that, yeah. I think that blurring faces and potentially masking voices is, um, crucial to our arguments that we yeah. are not bullying people because yeah. if we are protecting the identities of these people, then we are protect, we are, we are protecting them. And we yeah. are saying, it's not about you. It's about what you're saying. Yeah. It's about yeah. your actions. It's about, it's about like, and that's what it is about. Yeah. It's not about what they look like. And that's what, you know, they're always coming back to us and saying, oh, well, she's ugly. Oh, well, they're this. Oh, whatever. Okay. You know what and I mean? And they're using the straw man arguments. Yeah. Yeah. That, and that's something that I, I don't like is when people comment yeah. on people's looks or something like that. But um, to piggyback off of you saying that we need to blur their faces and speed up their voice or whatever, there is a, an app out there just so everybody who's listening, I'll put it in the show notes called InShot. It's a free, you can do it free. You can have a free um, subscription. You don't have to pay. So for me, just, that's what I'll, I'll start. I mean, I think I'm going to start, yeah. that's what I'm going to start doing, right? I'm going to, yeah. I want to take this feedback and I want to be able to, to do better, right? Yeah. I'm not going to go back and erase anything that I've done right. because I want people to see how I've evolved and how I've grown because Absolutely. they will understand the true fact of the meaning of when you know better, you do better. She's been educated. These people have been educated. They've been called out and they continue with their poor, negligent behavior. I had to do a lot of healing from the MLM industry myself. And again, I understand the toxicity and the poison that runs through the veins of many MLM distributors. I understand and I know what it's like to be taken advantage of. I had a very, very hard situation happen within an MLM at the end of 2021 that almost took me out. I lost a best friend, a woman that I looked at as a sister. I talked to her on the phone every day. We were business partners and I lost that friendship and it almost ruined me. I lost a lot of other friendships along with it. I became a loner. I became a hermit. I stayed inside. I still pretty much stay inside. And I just healed my way through 2022. And it still hurts. I have wounds from MLMs. I understand probably more than most people in this little crew because I was at the top. I was one of the ones sitting down at the tables with the CEOs. I was the one on the stage training people on how to get more customers. I know what it's like and I can tell you this. 
I also know what it's like to be publicly ridiculed and shamed. I've been incarcerated and I had my name plastered all over online forums, groups, Facebook, talking about how much of a criminal I was for a driving charge, how I was a poor mother because I had a baby at home. People had no idea what I was going through inside while I was incarcerated, but they chose to talk about me anyway. I've felt the pain of being publicly tarred and feathered on an online platform, and I felt the pain from being damaged in an MLM. And I would take the pain of being damaged in an MLM over that public shaming any day. That really, really hurts because it's not just one person talking about you. It's not just one person harming you. When you get one that has a crew behind them, it is like vicious vultures on a dead rabbit. And they don't let up until there's nothing left. Y'all are acting like vultures. If you are willing and able to publicly shame a woman for her sexuality, to publicly shame a marriage and talk about adultery, if you are willing to shame women for their parenting, their drinking, and accuse them of things that you could never prove, I dare say you'd be willing to go really far to hurt people. And that doesn't make you anti-MLM. That makes you anti-woman. What women in MLMs need is love, empathy, understanding, support. Women join MLMs for a reason, usually because they're hurting for money. Have you ever reached out to women at the bottom of MLMs and asked them if they know how to create their own LLC? Have you ever made a video for women showing them in all of the 50 states, resources on how to create their own LLC and become their own business owner? Have you ever posted at home, work from home, remote jobs on a YouTube channel so that women struggling with money issues could get a work from home position? Or have you just been out here dragging people through the mud because it makes you feel superior. You are doing women in MLMs zero favors with your content. You are hurting people and you are pushing a harmful, harmful narrative. And it is out of control. You are not helping women leave MLMs. You are pushing them further into the arms of MLMs because at least that community for the moment is accepting them. Who do you think they run to when they're plastered all over your IG pages? Their team and that team is there for them. Why would they want to leave that community and come out into the wilderness, the wild, wild west of anti MLM and try to be accepted into yours when it appears you have no problem eating your own? you are contributing to even more separation amongst females in today's day and age by posting the content you're posting. You cannot be pro-woman. You cannot be an ally of any kind if you are constantly acting as an anti-feminist, an anti-woman, and abrasive all over the World Wide Webs. That's all I've got for today. What I want is for women to heal, regardless of if they're in an MLM or they're not in an MLM. We all need healing, understanding, love, and empathy. And if you can't spread that out here in this world, you just don't belong on the internet. Make sure you like this, share it, and subscribe. Maybe I'll do a part two. If you want a part two, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for coming to The Rebear Show.